find Brielle and I have a service dog named Arlo and he is a standard poodle and we go on walks outside kind of often so um, it's really important for me to be able to tell like fleas, ticks, mosquitoes, like what everything looks like so that if he does get something like that I can treat it well. Uh, Arlo is on a monthly flea and tick and worm preventative but we also check, you know, if we go on a walk or something, I do a check and I check him every time I groom him and I groom him relatively often just to be 100% sure that he's not getting one of these bugs on him. So today I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about how to prevent and how to treat fleas, ticks, and mosquitoes. And I'm going to be talking a little bit about like how to recognize them, that kind of stuff. Don't mind me, I am looking down at my notes. Let's first talk about fleas. So fleas are parasites. Basically they feed off of pets and they infest like your space, like your carpet, the bedding, um, covers and stuff, like curtains even, like rugs on your floor. They will get everywhere. Um, they have to have like a host sort of like to live though. Um, they are little tiny, I'll include a picture, tiny wingless parasites. They are usually identified by like a dog who's itching um, or if black and white specks appear kind of on the fur that they normally wouldn't be. They can cause things like dermatitis, even like tapeworms and anemia can be caused by fleas. Really sucks. So the they have this like life cycle where 50% of the population of fleas on your animal is likely going to be eggs then 35% is going to be like the larva so like the babies and then pupa is like older uh, which is going to be about 10% and then 5% is actually adults the adult fleas that you can actually see on your animal only make up like 5% of the population the other 95% are different life stages like I just mentioned that are actually invisible to the human eye. So the eggs, larvae, and pupas can't even be seen by people. Like when you look at your dog and you're like checking for fleas, you can't even see those. So that just makes it all the more important to check, um, especially after they go in grass, shaded areas under trees, um, and like, you know, if they're in an area where there's like lots of cracks in the flooring, that kind of stuff will be where fleas can pop up. So while they're annoying, they can also cause flea allergy dermatitis, transmit tapeworms, and lead to anemia if they're left untreated. Uh, so they're like a little bit more than just kind of a nuisance. Um, basically, these tremendous leapers quickly spread to multiple hosts and into your home. Many wild animals carry fleas and then they can end up in your yard or on nearby trails that you're walking, making environmental control vital. Uh, wherever an infested animal goes is where the flea cycle can exist. So females can even lay thousands of eggs in their lifetime and it can take as little as two days for them to actually hatch, which is crazy. So, you know, do you, you one of the main things you're going to be looking for is like, do you even have fleas? Um, if your pet is itchy, usually people first guess fleas. Um, it's not really a bad guess because they're, they're very common. However, it can be caused by seasonal or food allergies. A bunch of other things can cause itchiness. So you want to make sure that you're actually checking for fleas before you just immediately start treating for them. Um, you can use a flea comb, which I'll show you guys what that looks like. Flea combs look kind of like this. Um, and I would say that a lot of poodle owners use them just on their dogs for, um, for like, puffing out their top knot and that kind of stuff, but they are also used to find fleas. So you use a flea comb and you brush up the base of the fur. So you want to go all the way down to the base. Um, usually their tail and their groin area is going to be where live fleas and flea dirt, so like the feces, are going to be. They're teeny black spe specks that turn reddish when they get wet. So that's kind of how you can tell if your animal has fleas is by using a flea comb to like actually check those areas. If you find evidence of your flea, of, of your dog or cat having fleas, chances are that they're in your home as well, which really sucks. Um, treating fleas exclusively on your pets 
isn't going to solve the problem entirely because there's still going to be fleas in your home. It would be like scooping up water with buckets to stop a flood when the faucet is still running. So you'll want to eliminate, eliminate the fleas from your pets, home, and outdoor spaces. Those are kind of the three places that you want to look at. There's a lot of different products that you can use that are like flea and tick preventatives or like cleaning for your home. Those are definitely things you want to look at. I don't necessarily have any recommendations other than maybe Wonderside because they're relatively natural. Uh, that's a pretty good one to use. So you want to be sure that you're treating those three spaces and your veterinarian can recommend how to do that. If you don't want to or don't feel confident doing the research yourself, I would definitely recommend talking to a veterinarian because they will be able to help you treat all three of those areas and make sure that it's actually gone. And there's a lot of ways that you can prevent fleas as well. You know, you wanna keep them off your pets, out of your home and out of your yard or whatever area that you live in. So there's a lot of different ways you can use preventatives. Um, I use a preventative that Arlo like ingests and it helps keep him flea and tick free. Um, and then with our home, we make sure that we routinely clean Arlo's bedding and routinely vacuum and clean other areas with, um, you know, different things that would prevent fleas from sort of propagating there. To keep them out of our yard, any wild animal that we see, um, if we see one, we usually will try to make sure that I'm checking Arlo after we see one to make sure that he doesn't have anything. Um, and then if it does happen to get like relatively close to the house, we will spray off areas as need be. Um, obviously we kind of live in the country, so it's really difficult for us to keep our yard flea free without like hurting local wildlife. So we definitely don't use any products on our yard in order to do that because we don't want to hurt any of the local wildlife. Like if you live in some kind of suburban area where you have a small yard and you can treat the area that your pet will be in, then I would say that, that treating that is a good idea. But because of where we live, we cannot do that. So keeping them out of your home, keeping them off your pets, and keeping them out of your yard are probably the best ways to prevent fleas and ticks from causing harm to your dog. So now I'm going to tell you guys a little bit about ticks. So they're mostly known for Lyme disease uh, and Rocky Mountain spotted fever, Lyme disease being the more prevalent one. Um, they're arachnids actually, so they're the same as spiders, kind of. They're like really good climbers and they're really hardy, so like they, they will survive like oh my gosh, like you have to basically like burn them or cut their heads off and sever their heads and like crush them in order to make sure that they don't like come back. They're identified by feeling like a really small bump on your pet's skin. So um, they're like larger and kind of slower pests. They don't really actively seek out hosts, but it's they're usually they picked up by accidentally by brush blood and like grass when or the plants diseases can, um, um, because total prevention is basically they difficult most often um, deterring them from staying on your pet and biting them is key so uh, if you're going through like a heavily wooded area I would be sure to be maybe even stop and check your pet halfway through and then also when you're done because that kind of thing those ticks can get engorged quickly and what an engorged tick is They're found in curtains, tree bark, wet, humid climates, um, in forests. The biggest thing for those I would recommend is a tick key. So that is the safest way of getting them off in one piece so that you are not leaving the head or something there for it to cause more problems, that kind of stuff. You want to make sure you get the whole thing and then you do tick medication. So you can call your vet and say, hey, my dog had a tick on it, I have a tick key, I removed the whole thing. However, now what do I do? And they will be able to give you the best treatment uh, plan for your pet because they might be different depending on the animal. Lastly, I'm gonna talk about maybe like the least 
I mean, obviously they're still, still a big deal, but probably the least like horrible of the, the pests, which are mosquitoes. So they are the little winged guys. They are identified by the buzzing noise. They can cause malaria, West Nile, and Zika, I believe. I'm not really sure how it's pronounced. Um, only female mosquitoes bite. Did you know that? It's kind of interesting. Um, they need the protein in their blood to, in the blood to help their eggs develop. So male mosquitoes do not actually bite you. Very interesting. They're most often around standing water and then anywhere where it's warm, wet, and humid. But as we all know, I'm sure you guys know, and I definitely know too, they are everywhere. Uh, where we live in the Midwest, they are constantly everywhere. We live in the country, so mosquitoes run rampant out here. Crazy, they have, they're everywhere. Even in suburban areas, they're there too. So mosquito bites are relatively common with humans. Basically, these little guys, these pesky insects are largely ever present in many environments, especially humid areas. They can be challenging to control because of the neighbor's untreated lawns, open land, or in multifamily residences. So basically what happens is if your animal gets bit by a mosquito, it might just cause maybe some itching, but it can cause malaria, West Nile or Zika for, you know, for, for creatures. So we want to be sure that if it can cause other things. So we want to be sure that if your dog starts to show like symptoms that might be, you know, not good and you've checked for fleas and you've checked for ticks and nothing else could have really caused it, it could be a mosquito bite that transmitted some kind of disease. So you would want to go get the, the animal checked out. So that's basically all I have for you guys today. Um, I obviously it's not like a ton of information, but I just wanted to share with you guys like what I know because every year um, around like summertime and stuff, I always talk to my veterinarian about these kind of pests to make sure that I know like, hey, this has been running around with fleas lately. Ticks are spreading this this year. Mosquitoes commonly have this right now so that I know what to look out for. Um, and I think it's important that you talk to your vet about that too. So, I mean, obviously I'm not a veterinarian myself, but this is just information that I had and I figured that I would share it with you guys. Um, if you guys have any questions, um, I will try my best to answer them. However, you know, if it's kind of a more, a bigger question, I would, I would be sure to ask your veterinarian because your veterinarian will have the best answer for your pet and you and your situation. So this is just kind of base, very basic information. Um, I'm probably missing some things. Let me know down in the comments. Correct me if you want. Uh, that would be very helpful. I'm sure people will find that helpful. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and um, let me know what you guys want to see next. Bye!